Hello and welcome back to the Listening Lounge. My name is Nick Day, CEO of JGA Recruitment Group, Specialist Payroll and HR Recruiters. And if you're not familiar with the Listening Lounge and this is the first time you've come across these videos, I want you to take a moment, sit back and relax because there's so much noise at the moment on LinkedIn. It can be really hard to be heard. Today, I'm joined by Matt Summers, someone I know well. I recorded an HR l and podcast with Matt several months ago. He's a leading voice on training and coaching in the UK. He's the author of two brilliant books, Coaching at Work and Coaching in a Week. He holds an MSc in Human Resources Development. He's a fellow of the CIPD and runs his own coaching skills training company, which is all about providing coaching skills for managers in the world of work. And let's be honest, during this pandemic, coaching in particular has been right at the top of many business agendas. So really excited to have Matt on the listening lounge today. How are you feeling, Matt? I'm feeling good, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me back. And so I'm gonna kick off with my first question, which it has to relate to COVID really. Why does coaching make so much sense as a leadership style, both during COVID, but also post COVID? So there's, there's a few um, elements to that, I think. And, and the first that springs to mind for me is um, to do with thinking about how much the world has changed and how much expertise, therefore, is now out of date. So if the leader's approach to uh, solving the problems that are manifesting now is to draw on his and her experience and kind of before February 2020, I think they're taking a big risk, you know, trying to solve today's problems with, with yesterday's solutions. So, so much has changed that it surely makes more sense to me anyway to, to lead people to find their own way through this, you know, to find their own solutions, to find unique answers to what are occurring now as, as unique problems and things. So I think the first answer to that question is the redundancy of experience um, makes it important now to, to, to deal with a novel situation in a novel way with a novel style of leadership, you know, help people find, find their own answers. So, so that would definitely be one thing. And then a line to that, I think, is recognising that um, it's really tough, you know, and, and people are struggling despite what we've seen LinkedIn about these amazing success stories, you know, I'm somewhat cynical about that. I think yeah. people are finding it really tough and, and, and people are worried and they're very concerned. And coaching therefore provides a, a means of, of checking in with that, you know, of, of being able to deal with that uh, emotional component of, of managing a relationship. And, and, and I find myself saying to people at the moment, it, you know, you've got to jump on Zoom or Teams or whatever and have that call, but it, it's, it's asking about how you're doing, not what are you doing. You know, yeah. I think a lot of kind of these sort of leadership calls have turned into uh, exercises in, in, in checking up on people. And, you know, it's it's about sort of checking in with people. If that doesn't sound a bit a bit cheesy, because uh, people are naturally fearful, and and of course the the, the leaders and the managers are as well. I I, I get that, and and a coaching approach, I think, perhaps enables some of that to flow both ways as well. So so that's good too, and then. The third part, I think, is somehow the leadership has got to turn into giving, handing over the responsibility to the other person. And coaching's all about that. You know, one of the key principles of, of coaching is generating choice and responsibility for, uh, for uh, on, on the part of the other person. So um, it's so important to do that now because we have such limited time to engage with people. And well, the nature of that engagement has changed when you're trying to do this remotely uh, as opposed to face to face. So. Um, I mean, I would argue coaching has been the leadership style for, for decades or a necessary one. But um, yeah, certainly now, absolutely crucial. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think um, I personally have had to learn a wealth of new skills very, very quickly, as have most people watching this, you know, this listening lounge right now. What would you say to the people listening to this who say, look, we really want to coach our managers. We know we should be, but we haven't got the budget or where do we find the budget? Where do we find the resource for that? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the great kind of um, paradox, isn't it? You know, there's never been um, a more important time to develop people and give them new skills and abilities and uh, giving leaders coaching skills would be high amongst that. And yet at the same time, we've got like no resources now to be able yeah. to do it. So I think what I would say to people is that the, the great thing about coaching is the real challenge or the great thing about adopting a coaching style is that the real challenge is not taking on new things, it's giving up 
old things. So if a, if a new right. fund manager really wants to sort of adopt a coaching style or turn into that type of, of manager, then what they're going to need to do is, is give some things up, you know, rather than, than look for and, and, and take up some new things. So principle amongst that, as you've said, I think very accurately at the top of this, is to, to talk less and listen more. I mean, you, you, you'll get that from any uh, great coach training. We'll, we'll yeah. teach you and encourage you to do that, but you can, you can start now. Uh, replace talking with listening, rep replace giving directions with, with asking questions. Um, questions that are not designed to sort of diagnose a problem, but questions that are designed to get the other person thinking and taking notice of what, what's happening to them. Because coaching ultimately is about helping people learn from their own experience. So if we take a more questioning style to working with them, they're going to have their awareness raised and, and, and get more juice from uh, from, from experiences, from things that are happening to them. And then um, finally, I suppose, or, or the third component of this would be to replace uh, control with trust. So rather than micromanaging, uh, which is never really a good idea, but is almost impossible now post-COVID when we're yeah. uh, so far apart from each other, we've, we've got to sort of, um, I guess, start playing out trust a little bit more. I mean, ultimately, the only way you can find out whether you can trust people is to trust them. So. You mentioned right at the start of this that, you know, the Zoom MS Teams piece, if you like, is the, the most popular technologies. We tend to say, what are you doing rather than how are you doing it? And I think obviously at the start of lockdown, there were some trust elements with everyone working from home. Are they doing the job? Are they doing it when they're working from home? We don't know. And as a, and now we started to soften a little bit on that. But from a coaching expert as you are, what advice would you give to managers who are coaching teams remotely? What have we learned and what can we continue to develop? Well, it, it is different um, that, that I found uh, as a way that coaching uh, needs to adapt because I'm probably spending less, less time with people uh, to try and make these the sessions a little bit more impactful. I find myself putting much more emphasis now on kind of agreeing actions and having some yeah. metrics or some measures that people can follow between conversations where not so much of the work now is, is being able to done within the, uh, within the conversation, if that makes sense. Fantastic, fantastic. So last question um, while well, I've got you here, Matt, because you are a real expert and we've spoken on this subject so many times before as well. If, you're, if I was a leader watching this and I want to come away from this listening to this listening lounge and say, you know what, I want to be a better coach. What would you, what advice would you give to them as, the, as a first step to becoming a better coach? Uh, be, be more willing to go with the flow. Um, so um, that's going to embrace the, the three things that I spoke about earlier on, the, the questioning and the listening and the just you know, uh, increasing trust. Um, but it's maybe going slightly further than that, I suppose, in just being prepared to go where the conversation goes. Sure. Um, that that might take us into some uncomfortable places because there is a lot of a lot of fear in the atmosphere at the moment. And and you might find as a manager that adopts the coaching approach that people are starting to give you some stuff that's maybe a little bit personal, perhaps a little bit uncomfortable to listen to. Um, but it's probably very healthy that it's coming out because in my experience, you know, people don't share the more personal uh, content unless they're comfortable that you're a person they can trust with what they're saying to you. And, and, and then being able to sort of vocalize that, I think, is very, very healthy right now. You know, at a time when people's um, mental health is obviously at the top of the agenda now. You know, you, you get to hear something quite alarming. We've still got to be prepared to recognize that, you know, sometimes people need some external help. But generally speaking, a coaching car style conversation that enables people to just say, look, this is how I'm feeling and it's really uncomfortable for me. And you just be prepared to maybe just to listen to that, you know, not necessarily feel that you've got to intervene or fix things up or yeah. solve a problem. Just allowing people to express what they're experiencing, how it's making them feel. You, you might find is is almost sort of part of the cure itself. So my, my encouragement would be to anyone that wants to just sort of nudge that a little bit further along is just be prepared to, to, to go without the aid of a safety net sometimes. Perfect. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure having you on Listening Lounge today with Matt Sums. I know we have in the past and we could again talk about this subject for hours. I will give you a little plug though, because it's a brilliant book. And when people want to learn more about coaching, do check out Coaching in a Week. I know you can access it on Amazon and other sources. Uh, it's a brilliant book all about the subject. Remember, if you're listening to this, of course, every good conversation starts with good listening. Thanks again, Matt. And I will join you all again with the next episode of Listening Lounge 
we'll see. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you.